something different this time. 10 games worth playing today with no faffing around for when you're short on time. Get playing straight away without complicated controls or massive manuals to learn. So without further ado, let's take a look at 10 games to play on your C64 right now. System 3 are well known for having quality games, and Turbo Charge is one of their last for the C64 is no exception. One of the few games here that didn't come out on any other system, this is the Chase XQ that the C64 deserved. A real sense of speed on the road, thanks to some clever coding, is sent to extremes rarely seen on this 8-bit machine when you hit the spacebar and go tearing off after the terrorists who have raided a UN weapon stockpile. A fantastic opening sequence, great graphics on each stage, and possibly the best soundtrack on any C64 game all add up to a quality title. The only downside being long load times on tape. Clearly influenced by the film Rollerball and other dystopian visions of future violent sports, Speedball 2 is a pass and bash ball game, pitting your bottom of the table team brutal deluxe against the elites of the sport. Scoring points isn't just limited to goals, many of the pitch elements can rack up points or even multipliers, if you can keep the ball and your players upright long enough to do it. Grab power ups and coins during the game to improve your players between matches and there's plenty of modes here to keep you entertained for a while. Grab a second player for even more mayhem. Even though Codemasters produced a Maker Machine series around the time Slix was made, it apparently isn't the case of one influence in the other. What you will find though is that this is the closest you can get to that series on the C64. This is a top-down Formula 1 game, with real team names but no license for them, something that seems unlikely today. Memorising the tracks here is key, as you have no in-game map to guide you. Colliding with the scenery ends your race, but thankfully hitting other cars only slows you both down. Challenging other drivers for their cars, along with plenty of speed here and some impressive scrolling, make this the best top-down racer on the system. It's often a toss up between this and Emily Hughes for the best football game on the Commodore, and for instant arcade action, Micro Soccer takes the top spot in my list. Emily Hughes may have a more realistic feel, especially for the time, but it is hampered by unintuitive menus just to even start a game. The sensible software team stuck to the basics here and created a fast moving game with some innovative touches that would become standard in all football games in the years to come. Curling banana shots, weather effects and instant replays all make this a memorable experience. I just wonder whatever happened to the team after this. Another racing game, but this is a different beast altogether from the others on this list. What it lacks in speed compared to slicks or turbocharge, it makes up in charm and immediate arcade action, without any laborious multi-loading. It's simple enough, avoid the objects in your way, grab the points and make it to the checkpoint in time to keep going. It has that one more go factor, and as one of those times you might say that the home conversion might actually be better than the arcade game it's based on. 
Flanks at this with guns and own water, give live and let die a go. It's practically the same game. The oldest game here, but still absolutely worth your time playing, is Blue Max. Pilot your World War 1 biplane over enemy territory, dropping bombs on buildings and machine gunning enemy tanks and gun emplacements, trying to rack up enough points to get to the city stage and blow up the baddies HQ. Isometric scrolling isn't that commonplace in games, but works well here. Pinpoint accuracy with your bombs only takes a little practice. Try to hit those flashing targets and vehicles to get to the busier stages. Anyone who has played this before will know to watch out for sneaky enemy planes flying over you when you stop to refuel. One thing to note, use the F keys to change the controls to pilot style before the game starts, so up pushes your plane's nose down. This will be more intuitive for those of you who have played flight sims before. Likely the least well known and most surprising game on this list, Bounces is another violent future sports game. This time we have a knight and viking attached to bungee ropes in an arena, attempting to score points by knocking each other over or by throwing the ball into the gaps in the ceiling on the opposition side. There's also an element of strategy here. Stretching your bungee and getting knocked down tires you out, leaving you vulnerable to getting knocked down repeatedly or anchored to the back wall. Single player is a good challenge, but the real fun here is getting someone to play against you. A great pick for those retro nights with your friends. Before Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter 2, one-on-one -on -one fighters were mostly focused on karate. IK Plus, however, is a three-way battle, and proven on the first IK and similar games like Way of the Exploding Fist by having the fight run on fluidly until either the timer runs out or the points limit is reached. Leaving your two opponents to duke it out runs the risk of you coming last, so you must take them out without leaving yourself open, high kicking and bat flipping your way out of trouble. A true classic with its iconic soundtrack and multiple easter eggs, Load this up and try and land that split kick on both of your opponents. The only platform game on this list, but maybe the most iconic of all the games here, Bubble Bobble likely needs no introduction from most viewers. Bob and Bob have been transformed into bubble blowing dinosaurs and need to rescue their girlfriends from Baron Von Blubber in the Cave of Wonders. There's 100 levels for you and a friend to pop through, all almost exactly the same as the arcade version. Sure, it's not a perfect recreation, but this hits all the right playability notes and is as fun today as it was when it was first released. A perfect introduction for anyone unfamiliar with the C64. The only gripe a modern gamer might have is pushing up to jump. Forget Operation Wolf. It's too frustrating. Even Commando falls short once you realise you don't have to take out every enemy you come across, and at 3-4 minutes for a good player to beat, it's too short. 
Commander will swear it's at for a military themed action on the C64. You're a one man army gunning down swathes of grey uniformed enemies, blowing up vehicles and buildings with your grenades, and generally acting out every 80s action movie trope in one fell swoop. It's a shame there's no simultaneous two player option here, but it's hard to see past this as a fun and fairly long lasting single player experience. Thanks for watching. If you've liked this video, please give it a thumbs up, and if you disagree with my list, leave a comment below. Keep an eye out for the follow up video to this, the top 10 C64 games to play back in the day.